All right, 24.2 just got announced. Rowing, deadlifts, double unders. Here we go. Twenty-four point two guys just got released. We've got double unders, we've got deadlifts, and we've got rowing. Okay, very similar to last week. We've got a lot of posterior chain once again. So we've got a couple of different variations that we're going to do this week. Get everything warmed up. Okay, so what I want you to start with, if you've got a band laying around, awesome. This is going to go around the knees. We're going to get the glutes and the hamstrings warmed up here. Okay, so. Put the band on around the knees. We're gonna lay back on the ground, lay all the way back. And what I want you to do, I want you, if your normal glute bridge is here in this position, I want you to take a slight step out with both legs and then we're gonna engage our midline, squeeze the back down to the ground, come up into our bridge, hold two seconds and back down. What this band is gonna do is gonna turn our glutes on a little bit more and walking our feet away gets our ham hamstrings engaged just a little bit more, okay? so. We're gonna start out with two sets here, about 10 to 12 reps of these. Then we're gonna go over here to a plate. I want you to grab a plate, put it on the ground. We're gonna put our toes up here and we're gonna hit calf raises with the plate on the ground, okay? So get something that you can stabilize on. Toes up, heel hanging off. We're gonna let our heel come down to the ground, feel a little stretch down through your calf. And then we're gonna push up through the plate, hold for a couple seconds and then nice control on the way down. Same thing here, we're gonna get the calves warmed up. We're gonna do two sets of about 10 to 12 reps, okay? Last thing, we still need to warm the shoulders up, okay? We need to engage the midline and then get a little length to the hamstrings to get everything warmed up. So, we're gonna go back down to the ground again. We're gonna go hands down here on the ground. We're gonna go into our push-up and then we're gonna press through that up into a down dog position. Come back down, push up into a down dog, okay? So we're gonna get a little stress, a little flexion in our lumbar spine to get that position warmed up. Should feel a stretch through your hamstrings, also getting the shoulders warmed up, okay? With this, let's go two sets of about six reps of that, okay? So that's our warm up. All right, 24.2 is? Not a mushroom. It's not a mushroom. Not a it's mushroom. A circle. It's a circle. So it's a circle. It's a circle attack. All right, 20 minutes. It's a 20, Trey. We're filming here. Sorry. It's 20 minutes. <laughs> a little bit different from last week. Um, very similar movements as last week. Yeah. We're going to pull and we're going to jump again. So uh, <clears throat> we've come up with a couple things to think about. Obviously, we have a 20 minute time domain. You don't want to go out hot. Uh, you want to start off at what we've said about your 5K pace. Because the way you look at this workout is it's 20 minutes, which is about a 5K time. People obviously are gonna be a little faster, some a little slower, but um, think about that when you're starting this workout. You might be able to, in the last five minutes, add a little push. Um, you wanna think about that damper setting. You might go a little bit lighter on the damper setting than normal, play around with it, maybe in your warm up, a higher stroke rate. Uh, just kinda of depends on what your heart rate does with that damper setting. Yeah, and I would definitely, for the average person, I would mess around like with that, maybe like a round or two, Come out you know, like with a pace like where you think, okay, it might be a little soft. So that way you know, because 20 minutes, you're, kind of, you're trying to play it for the long haul. What you don't want to do is obviously come out with a pace that you know that you cannot keep. You get your heart rate spiked, you go into a fast paced deadlift, then you get on the jump rope, you're spiking it even higher. It's almost better to be a little bit conservative off the start and kind of save it for like that midway point. You kind of give yourself that little check in. Yeah, a little, uh what do they call reverse pacing? Yeah, whatever. there you go. So, that's like a Jake um, Lockhart special. Yeah, that's a Jake Lockhart special. Negative yeah, splits. Yeah. There we go. That's what I was that's looking for. Say. That was the term I was looking for. Um, yeah, so what you want to think about, like we said, on the rower, settling that pace. I'm thinking around a minute, a little over a minute maybe on the row pace, and then a minute on my deadlift and my double under. So two minute rounds, 10 minute, ten rounds. You saw these guys, I think, get into their 11th or finish their 11th to get into their 12th. Yeah something like that. So that's where the top level will be. Darren, speak to somebody maybe around the eight or seven or eight round. Yeah, so you know, you're probably gonna take that pace. You're gonna look around like 2.30 to almost like three minutes around. That'll kind of creep you right around that seven to eight round pace. Um, again, I mean, like transitions, I always think are the silent killers in, in workouts like this, cause trying to transition way too hot, obviously way too early, kind of like I stated before. But if you can just keep it down to a minimum, keep your equipment close, 
Be smart about your jump rope. I think that's the one thing that drives me nuts when people throw their jump rope down, they pick up a tangled mess and you see everything that's just go to crap. One thing before we go to transitions uh, on the row, that's somewhere where you can kind of settle your heart rate. Um, you might as well, for most people, cycle this deadlift unbroken, no yeah. more than two sets. Yeah. And um, so the one double unders, you, you can slow down a little bit and bring the heart rate down, but you can really do that on the row while you're still moving forward. So get on that rower, get going. Don't sit there and wait. Don't ever yeah. pause or break a row. Just keep moving. Um, if we have to bring that damper down, bring that damper down. Uh, talking transitions, in and out of the rower. Um, everybody should know Hi, this. Champ. Everybody should know this. Who's on that thing? I don't know. Somebody with tiny feet. All right, so. Watkins. When you're, when you're in the rower, push down, foot goes forward, kick your heel up, and you're out. Think about that every time. You can set these um, straps. You could tape them to a, something you can get pretty in and pretty out pretty quick. Um, some people do the, the no crank down. I like to have the the feel of the power there, so oh. you can get them a little tighter, but Drops up and down. when you do that. What? Nothing. Crank them down. Um, so one thing, that's the transitions on the rower. Like Darren said on the rope, set your rope down every time. Ben, I'll give Ben credit for this uh, floor layout here. It's, we're gonna call it the Benjamin Triangle. Yeah. So can we call it that, Ben? Is that good? Right, yeah. All right, so you got the your ben rower angle. here. You got your double under here, kind of a, an A. Um, and then you double under here in the middle. Now, you're gonna have to kind of watch where the handle is and where your, your bar is. You can even just set this over here and you don't have to worry about that. Since there's no floor layouts, transitions will be key. You will have to step over to get to the deadlift, but you're gonna have to come back this way. You could, there's different ways you could do it, but this is a pretty efficient way to do it. You just gotta be smart and watch the front of that rope so you're not hitting anything. Um, minimal breaks on the deadlifts. We went rower, deadlift. Make sure you're setting that back every time because this will fry the back. You're pulling, you're pulling. So make sure that back, take care of that back. If you need a, a belt, throw a belt on, maybe keep it loose um, for the row. And then if you want to tighten it up for the deadlift, just make sure you're just being efficient with that deadlift. Shoulders are getting all the way behind the bar, keeping that back set. Um, it's a deadlift. Do anything? Yeah. Now. I'm going to take it to oh, okay. the, the uh, Darren setup. All right, Darren so setup. I'm going to take credit for this one. I'm going to move this bar over. I'm going to go just like this. For the everyday person, we're going to expand it a little bit. So that way we can actually have a little bit more rest in it. So yeah, from the rower, just like Rich said, transition in and out smooth. Think like five to 10 seconds between stations. You get done with the row, you should almost wind down the last couple meters. Take that five, 10 seconds, pick up your jump rope. Don't touch me. It's a deadlift. Deadlift's person. next, yes, yeah, stop touching. Then you'll hit your 10 deadlifts, then you'll transition over top. But five, 10 seconds, that way you know you can keep yourself calm, kind of get your heart rate under control, and then just transition through. But not too much. But not too much. Not too much. Yeah. Uh, maybe do that in the first part of it, and then as you feel this workout out and get you know, 10, 11 minutes in, start speeding up those transitions. Everything should be pretty much unbroken though. You may trip on a double under, but let's try to keep everything in unbroken sets. Double unders, make sure to breathe. Everybody gets so tense and so tight. Try to keep those shoulders relaxed. You can slow down your jump, your cycle a little bit. You can speed it up as well. You can make up a ton of time there if you want to, if you want to push that. You know, you look at a workout and you're like, all right, what's my strength and weakness? Where can I catch my breath? Where can I make up time? Figure it out for you on this workout. Um, you can, like we said, you can slow down a touch, you can speed up a touch. Yeah. Um, try to be as calm as you can on those double unders. Yeah, especially in 20 minutes, I feel like in the open, people always get caught up with a pace that they've never done before. Like sometimes people try and speed up their double unders faster than they've ever done them. There's no reason for it, it's 20 minutes, settle into like what you know, just like Rich said, breathe. Grip as well. You're gripping handles, you're gripping a bar, and you're gripping a jump rope. You're under constant tension. So make sure you're smart about when you're rowing, relax the hands like when you can. Jump rope, like Rich said, don't get too tight. Stay loose with it. Deadlift, it is what it is, but maybe mix the grip up every single time to kind Good of hook help grip that transition. it too if you want to tape your thumb. Yeah, Some people like grip. that double overhand. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit of grip, a little bit of back, high heart rate. Have fun. Let us know how it goes. Athletes, welcome back to 24.2.
I think we're going to have to call this one the DJ Khaled because you can always do another one. And that's what they're hoping for on the programming that you've got today. We've got the combination of our row, our deadlift, and our single unders if you're doing the scale division, or you got double unders in your regular, your RX division. We've got Patience with us who just did the scaled version. And like a champ, she's already got her breathing back and she's ready to go with these tips and tricks for you guys. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the setup that you have for your floor. There's no floor plan here, so you can put things as close or as far away from each other as you want to. But as we go through, set up the floor for you so that you can be intentional during your transitions. If we put things so close together that we start to panic because we get off the rower and the deadlift bar is right there, think about moving it away from yourself just a little bit so you can have a chance to breathe, finish your deadlifts, and then move to your rope. With this as well, when I talk about being intentional, it doesn't matter trying to race to the barbell as fast as you can, because if you get to the barbell but you're not ready to move, then you need to think about being a little bit slower, use that transition time to get some breaths in, get yourself recovered, and get ready for the next movement. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna talk about the row, then we're gonna go into the deadlift, and then our double unders. So I'm gonna have patience step over to a rower. She's just gonna have a seat. We're not gonna do anything yet. If you guys wanna come around over here, Everyone knows your damper setting on the side. On our Concept 2, it's gonna be on the right side. Typically, people will go between a six and an eight. Now, the thing I'm gonna challenge you with is, is that during your warm-up, I want you to play around with your damper settings and try a three, try a four, try a five. Find the damper setting for you because just like your Enneagram number, it's unique to you. You don't need to do what everybody else is doing. So if you traditionally row at a seven or an eight, during your warm-up, I want you to go through and start moving with a four and see if you can maintain a similar pace that you can with that higher number, but a lower exertion so that you can apply more on your barbell and your jump rope. Now, when Patience goes to set up, she's gonna go ahead and put her feet in the heel cups. And our setup here is gonna be super important because we wanna make sure that the ball of the foot is gonna be located over this plastic piece that doesn't move. So if you don't have that setup correct, let's fix that first. The second thing, and I always say this, is that if you got loose straps, you're gonna have tight hamstrings. So we wanna make sure that Patience takes the time to tighten up those straps so that now when she brings her body back in, she can pull against the straps versus using her heels and doing a little hamstring curl every time she comes in because if we have tight hamstrings, those deadlifts are gonna be no fun. Next, she's gonna go ahead and grab her handle. And as we go through this, I'm gonna to talk to you about breathing on every single movement. She's gonna take a nice deep breath, and then she's gonna breathe out as she goes back. Breathe out, breathe in on the way in, and breathe out, and again. And I'm gonna have patience keep going as we talk about her form here, because she's extending knees, then hips, then arms, and then she's coming back in the opposite way with arms, then hips, then knees. It's super important that we do this in a way that's gonna be comfortable for us, and if you pay attention, this is a very similar movement to the deadlift we're about to do. We're gonna use this row to recover. So I'm gonna go ahead and have patience relax for just a second for me, she can hook the handle in. On the row, it's a 300 meter row. That is not a long time. When you're transitioning back to the rower, I want you to move back as fast as you can and just start moving. The intention or the intensity that you have there, I'm not worried about because I want you to use those first four to five pulls to start to recover. And then you can get into that pace that you can dial in for. In any place in this workout, this is where you're gonna try to re breathe, recollect yourself so that you can approach that deadlift and the double unders or single unders and potential unbroken sets. Now, the second thing is, is that when she grabs that handle, so go ahead and grab it for me, I would like to make sure that we have thumbs wrapped around the handle. If you're going a thumbless grip, you're gonna make the mistake of that, th that handle slipping out of your hand and you losing it and now you're strapped in and then you're gonna have to lose four to five seconds to get back to that paddle. So as we go, we've got this. She's gonna go ahead and pull and pause in the back for me. When we pull, notice how Patience brings that rower handle a little bit lower on her torso, which is great. We can go anywhere between sternum and belly button level if we're going high, so bring it up tall, up here, even higher. Some people try to pull with this guillotine pull because they think that the extra two to three inches that they're getting back is gonna help. It does not. If anything, it's putting us into impingement in our shoulders, so we want to get rid of that. Think about using our big, strong muscles in our back to pull that handle back before we return. So we're gonna go ahead and come in, and I'm gonna have her pause, 
right there. The second thing that Patience does, or third thing that Patience does really well, is if you take a look at her heels, they're remaining flat. Now, your heels can come up slightly on the return, but if we're coming in so far, go all the way in, as close as you can. Bring those heels up, like ugly, like this. If we're coming in, and Patience has too good an ankle mobility to demonstrate a bad rep here, but if you're coming in to where you're pushing off on your toes, you're losing power. So only go in until you start to feel those heels rise slightly, and then go right back into your next pull. We're gonna go ahead and relax here. So rack your handle, undo your feet, and we'll go ahead and step out and then we will move to the barbell. Now, for our barbell, we just finished pulling and we're going to pulling with weight. And for our deadlift, everybody knows how to deadlift, but we're gonna talk about a couple things that are gonna make it a little bit better for this workout. The first thing Patience is gonna do, she's gonna step up and she's gonna cut her foot in half with the barbell. So if she starts with her toes behind the bar like this, that bar is gonna start out in front. She puts everything on her low back. We're gonna think about stepping up to the bar so it's gonna be over midfoot. Next, she's gonna come down to the bar and with her grip, she can go double overhand, she can go mixed, Show me a mixed grip. Or we can go double overhand with a hook grip. So show me that. Out of all the grips that you could use, I would recommend either going mixed grip or hook grip. Hook grip's gonna save your grip so that when you get onto the rower, you're gonna be able to pull just a little bit harder. Go ahead and relax for a second and stand up for me. So at our top position, what we're gonna do is take a nice deep breath in. She's gonna go down to the bar and she's gonna perform her first rep by driving her feet through the floor and standing, going right back down. Give me another rep right after this. One more, and relax, put the bar down. Now, during warm-ups, what Patience was doing, she was giving me great deadlifts for an accessory movement because we were coming up and we were going down, controlled all the way through. For today, we're looking at trying to get a faster cycle time. Now, I'm not telling you to dive bomb the bar, so I don't want you to pick up and then sling down, but we wanna think about being intentional with that down to the floor so that we're less time under tension on our hamstrings and our posterior chain. She's gonna go one more time, shows five working sets here, or five working reps, good. Breathe out, every time you go up, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, perfect, and relax. You're gonna find that as you start to get into this workout and it gets really, really rough around the 10, 12 minute mark, you're gonna start to collapse and everything is gonna feel bad. I want you to focus on picking a spot that's at eye level across the room when you're starting your rep. You're gonna go down to the floor and keep your eyes on that position. You can keep your head neutral, which is what we're always looking for, but this is gonna keep your chin up and more importantly, keep your head back slightly. Your head has weight to it. So if we're looking down at the floor here, it puts that weight forward, which means there's gonna be more and more work that our lower back is having to correct for. Ideally, we're thinking about fast, quick reps and keeping that barbell close so that we can get through our reps and move to what we have for our, our double unders or single unders. Now, if you're doing foundations, you can pick the weight that you're using on this and you can also elevate the surface that you're going to. So if you wanna take some parallettes, put them to the side so that you're using a PVC pipe with no weights, you can go down, make contact with that surface and then stand again. We're all posterior chain here, so I want you feeling that in your hamstrings and in your glutes. Let your lower back have a little bit of rest today, all right? Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our double unders and this is gonna round out the triplet of movements that we have. Now, double unders is the arch nemesis of many athletes. Today, if you guys don't have them, I don't want you to panic because we do have tips and tricks that you can follow to try to get your first double under. But for today, we've got patience doing single unders. So she's gonna go ahead and before she even moves, I want you to look at the way she has a rope set up. What we have is a horseshoe set up. What that means is, is that regardless of where patience comes from, she can step into a rope, pick up the handles and she's ready to start. If Patience takes the rope, and we have many people that do this, they get done with their set and they do one of these, and it ends up over there, she gets done with her deadlifts, and now she has to come over, untangle her rope, and she's losing seconds there. So always be intentional about placing that rope back on the ground in our horseshoe pattern so that we're set up for our next set. Next, she's gonna go ahead and grab the handles. The positioning for doubles, singles, whatever you're doing, is I want you to think about keeping the handles low and outside your body. When Patience is looking forward, she should always be able to see these handles in her peripheral. When we get tired on doubles, when we get tired on singles, our shoulders start to creep up like this and our hands start to go back like this, meaning that the contact point with the ground is behind us and that's how we trip on the rope. So Patience is always gonna think about keeping those slightly in front of her body so that she can see them when she's looking forward. She's gonna go ahead and give us a couple singles 
And with these singles, she's staying nice and relaxed and the movement is staying in her wrists. If you guys are using too long of a rope, then you're gonna start doing these reps here, which is gonna be even worse for our row and our deadlift. So minimal work, and that's where I want you to stay out with hands. Go ahead and relax for me. What we're gonna do is take a quick look at the length of the rope as well. So step on the center of the rope for me, pull it up. You'll notice that the top of the rope is close to patients' armpits or sternum, and that's where we want your rope to be set up with. It's super important that the correct rope length is used, because even if you got double unders, if it's the wrong rope, it's not gonna happen. Lastly, and this is one of the most important things that I coach athletes on doubles, singles, whatever it is, when we're jumping, we're thinking about doing a jump, and letting those heels kiss the floor if we can. The reason that is, is because we want to avoid staying permanently flexed in our toes like this, because we've all seen people do their double unders where they stay in that position. That will blow your calves up and you're not gonna be able to work on the row, you're not gonna be able to work on the deadlift. A quick tip for you, regardless if you're scaled, foundations, RX, elite, whatever your category, during your warm up, think about skipping. So what we do is, it's just like the Rocky movies, you're gonna get your rope or your invisible rope and we're gonna to start to shift side to side. What this allows you to do is prep yourself to keep those ankles loose during that rope movement that you have. If you use these tips and tricks, apply them to your workout, have a great time, don't get overwhelmed by the 20 minutes because it's just another 20 minutes. You have prepared for this all year, we know that you're gonna dominate. So have fun, good luck, post those scores to the comments and then catch us again for next week for 24.3. All right, so cool down for 24.2. What we're gonna do, very similar to last week, after you finish, after you've picked yourself up off the floor, let's hit about five minutes of our nice cool down on a bike. Okay, so spend five minutes there. Then we're gonna go five minutes, legs up on the wall, down regulation, focus on your breathing, get everything under control. After you finish there, we're gonna go to the ground. We're gonna get some length and a stretch out on these glutes. So what I want you to do, one leg, 45 degree angle out to the side. And then the focus here is trying to get this hip to rock back. So you should feel a light stretch back here in the posterior side of the hip. We're gonna hang out here. Let the upper body relax. Get some length to the lumbar spine. Let this thing around kind of sink into that stretch. And then you can kind of work around in different positions here if you feel tightness in those areas, okay? Last thing, I want you to spend about one minute per body part, hamstrings, lumbar spine, calves, um, and get a nice, easy foam roll out of this, okay? So two weeks in a row, we've gotten a lot of stress through our posterior chain. Show it some love, you'll, you'll pay dividends in the, in the future, okay? So finish with a nice foam roller, and then we'll be here next week for 24.3.